what is going on everybody welcome back to another video so there's a couple things I want to address in this video um, the the first thing is I'm splitting the the channel um, so this channel that you're seeing here mall runner is gonna be for overlanding and adventure stuff basically um, and then the second channel it's gonna be for the mechanical stuff so as far as mechanical stuff goes I'm gonna post this video on the second channel and this will be the last mechanical um, video on this channel which is Mall Runner. Um, so I'm gonna put the name of the uh, mechanical channel somewhere up here and also I'll put it in the uh, description. So today it's just me and Evie here wherever Evie went. Evie she's coming come on so today what I'm doing is uh, Mall Runner is getting in a pin hard bar correction kit uh, however you pronounce this empty or something and then also in addition I've had this um, pin hard bar for for quite a while now and it's just been sitting on the corner because I don't have a purpose to use it yet but I'm going to install this today I think this is a Rhino 4x4 something like that but this is an adjustable pin hard bar um, so where these two goes is back here on the rear axle so this is the pin hard bar and then the extension is going to be up here that's to correct the uh, pin hard correction or the angle so the problem I'm having and what this uh, will correct is that I'm having a bump steer so um, when you're off-roading you'll notice it as much but uh, on the street when I hit you know like manholes and stuff you know the the front there's just like a bump steer to it so it's supposed to fix that um and then after that I'm probably going to build a transmission skip plate so now I have the the radiators cover the engine is covered all the way back to the transmission and I'm going to build a skip plate that runs right here so with that it's going to involve is building I got to build like a cage a structure structural cage that will hold the skip plate and I have um that is one by one uh, square tubing that I'm gonna build a cage out of and it's not gonna be in this video obviously but the next one uh, mall crawler is gonna get a a I guess like a two front bumper that I'm building and yeah that's gonna be fun so um me and Tiffany are moving to Georgia our last weekend here in Colorado is gonna be uh, June 17th and mall crawler is going to be sold um, I already have buyers lined up for that um, I wanted to keep the third gen but it just it's hard to drive it you know two vehicle uh, back to Georgia it's just a lot of fuel and I'm not in a place in life right now where I can um, throw a bunch of money at two vehicle at the same time so um, yeah so mall crawler I'm gonna build a front bumper for it to make it look better because I ripped the front bumper off at uh, Yankee Hill and I'll show it right here Yeah, so just gonna fix build a little two bumper for the front and then um yeah mall crawler would be getting sold probably like the first week of june right before we move and uh yeah that's where we're at all right so the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna run a ratchet strap from here to this point of the frame and also another one from here to this point of the frame uh the reason for that so what the pimp hard bar does it keeps the uh the axle centered so if I take this bar off, the axle is going to want to shift side to side. And with the rest strap there, it's just going to limit how far it's going to move. All right, so like I said, the rest strap, this one is hooked up to the, the upper link. And then this strap is hooked to this size upper link. So it's crossed. 
and that ideally it should uh well in theory it should keep the axle centered so if you're like uh like a standard travel suspension you're probably you know you, your axle won't move that much so you can probably get this done without uh, using straps or anything but uh, I have long travel on here so when I take this bar off the axle is going to want to droop a lot more and that gives it more chance for it, the axle to swing and for my springs to pop out so this is just for extra precaution so these uh there's a bolt here and a bolt up here with a nut in the back uh, this is a capture uh, nut, so you don't have to worry about that. They're 19 millimeters. All right, so this is the factory bar. This is the aftermarket one. Um, the other end is already, they're messed up. So what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> I'm gonna adjust this, the aftermarket one, uh, just a little bit past the factory one. All right, so just measuring measuring the outside of the bushing from end to end is 41 inch. And then I made the aftermarket one, I turn it to, uh, was it 41 and a half? So just a half inch longer than the factory one. But that's where we're at. So I'm gonna bolt it up and then I'll tighten up the uh, gem nuts. So I'm just gonna leave it hanging and then I'm gonna grind this down so I can weld the uh, empty um, or I'm key bracket on here all right so this bracket is gonna get welded on right here uh, you will need to move this ABS sensor wire
All right, so the plan, as of right now, this is one big sheet. My front skip plate. The plan is I'm going to take this off, make it to two sections. It'll come down to about right here. It'll stop. And I'll make another plate that goes to the back. And from that, it'll connect to the, the plate that goes uh, under the transmission pan. All right, update. So, I don't think uh, I'm gonna have time to do the skip plate for the uh, transmission today. It's kind of running out of time, it's getting late already. But so far, the front skip plate is almost done. Um, so, I'm not a fabricator by any means, not even close. If you were to compare my skill to an actual fabricator, um, I'm like a loop tag. So, uh, yeah, I don't do this to to save money per se. I do it because it lets my creativity go wild. And um, as right here, I cut it a little bit too short, so I had to cut another sheet, extend it out, and I'm just gonna weld it. But that's the front skip plate. Uh, I put a bend right here. Just like so. And then for the uh, front div clearance, I cut out a hole right here. Freaking GoPro battery died, so I don't know how much that got. But uh, so this is the uh, the div skip plate, I guess. It goes right under the engine and the front differential. And I cut that out to to clear the uh, front div right here because I do have. Uh, a drop bracket so it's a little bit lower than factory i guess you can say so i gotta do a little notch right there to to help clear it but that's where i'm at all right so i'm basically done for today the pin hard bar is done and then the the uh, radiator and the diff skip plates are done so this is how the pin hard bar looks like after it's done And these lock nuts are already tightened. And then moving on to the front skip plate. So, um, I still need to make little tabs that covers these bolts. So if I hit anything, it'll just slide over. Um, I'll get to that eventually. And then this is the, I guess, the front diff skip plate that's the drop out or drop down whatever you want to call it this is with a drain plug that's how it looks like i have spacers here to space it down just a little bit yep that's basically it um be honest i don't recommend someone trying to make their own skip plate it's not worth it um especially the front the front what i just made you can buy that for like i don't know three four hundred dollars shoot i probably have like if i were to make it from scratch it's probably like 150 200 bucks just just in steel as of right now they're really expensive uh, so it's not really worth it and also shoot it probably takes like three to four hours of your time and then you need a welder you need a grinder and all kind of stuff to make it it's not really worth it but like i said i just do it because it lets my creativity go wild and just turn what are my thoughts into uh, something so yeah that's where we're at yeah so i appreciate you guys watching i'll see you guys again next time